Good morning, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. This is Pastor Jordan joining you, coming to you live from the Evergreen Missionary Baptist Church here in Williams, South Carolina, where we are rejoicing that this is the day that the Lord has made. We thank you for joining us because we recognize and realize that there's many other places you could have been this morning, but because, but by the grace of God, you found your way here, and we just want to let you know that we say thank you, and we celebrate you in the love of Jesus our Christ. Amen. And so this morning, I believe that the Lord gave us a word that's going to bless us, that's going to revolutionize our lives. Because this, what the, this word is going to address is something that we all, as human, just being part of the human family, that we have to deal with. Amen. So we're going we're gonna to go to the word of God. And I'm going to ask right now that you will share this video. Share this. Whether you, If you're joining us on Facebook, I'm going to ask you to tell a friend, hey, Evergreen is on. If you join us by YouTube, God bless you. Join. Let someone know. Tune in because there's a word from the Lord. And Pastor Joyner is going to, Lord, going to use the pastor to, to break the word of God down. Amen. So um, as we prepare our hearts and minds, let us think and meditate on how good God is. Let's think about that just this week, this past week, God brought us a mighty long way. He brought us out of danger seen that we could see and dangers that we didn't even know that was lying in wait. And because of that, we just say, thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. So I'm going to ask that you join, join me in prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you have given us. We thank you for your grace, your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for how good you have been to us in our lives. And dear Lord, we recognize and realize, Lord, that we have not all lived up to the privilege that you have allowed us as your children to live up. So, Lord, in Jesus' name, we ask you to search us even right now, Lord. Prepare our hearts and our minds for the word of God, that we'll be able to receive the word of God, Father God. We pray, Father God, that you will just strengthen us today, and Lord, speak and minister to us today, Father God. Lord, we are here. Lord, we are, we are empty pitchers before a ever-flowing fountain. So, Lord, fill us up today, Lord. Fill us up that we'll be able to have more of you and less of ourselves. Fill us up, Father God, that we may walk in the spirit and not in the flesh, Father God. Fill us up, Father God, that there will be no world but all you, Father God. So, Lord, I ask you to remember those who, Father God, are going through a difficult time in their lives right now. Whether they're going through the pain of losing a loved one, whether they're going through the pain of a broken relationship, Father God, we know that no matter what the circumstance or situation may be, that, Lord, you are able and you are more than willing, Father God, to fix it. So, Lord, we look unto you, Lord Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, asking you, Lord, to guide us that we'll be able to do your will and your purpose. And it's in Jesus' name we ask, Lord, that you will give us a fresh anointing, Lord. That we'll be used for your will and your purpose, Father God. So, Lord, anoint us afresh. In Jesus' name, we pray. And let all of God's people say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our scripture reading today will be coming from Genesis chapter 50, verse 15 through 21. Genesis chapter 50 verse 15 through 21 this is the same scripture that we came from last week and I believe that the Lord is impressed upon my spirit that there's still yet more revelations in this scripture that we can pull we can glean out this morning amen so turn to Genesis chapter 50 verse 15 through 21 today I'll be reading from the New King James Version amen and the word of the Lord reads, beginning with that 15th verse. When Joseph's brother, or rather, when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for, the, for all the evil which he did, which we did to him. So they sent messengers to Joseph saying, 
before your father died, he commanded, saying, Thus you shall say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. Now, please forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when, he, when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we are your servants. Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good. In order to bring it about as it is this day, to save many people alive. And finally, verse 21. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Amen. 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 Last week, we came, to the, we came from the sermon topic, Overcoming Disappointment. When we, we explored during that time of worship, during that time of sermonic, sermonic selection, this, this is what we, 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 ex, we explored four basic points. Point number one, overcoming the disappointment of process. We, we, we brought out the point that, that process, even going forward, the, the process of going or reaching the goal that you believe in God for, there will, it will be laid with many disappointments. We also came from the sermon top, we also came from the sermon point, overcoming the disappointment of loneliness. Sometimes when, you know, we're, you, you expect those who are closest to you to celebrate you, to be excited, but sometimes that doesn't happen. We also spoke, we also brought up the point, maintain your integrity during disappointments. That even while you may feel like, what's the use? What, you know, if God was for you, you wouldn't be going through. We still have to be faithful to God. We still have to maintain who we are in God. And finally, the fourth point we addressed in that sermon was, God is with us during disappointment. And, we, and throughout all those, those sermon points, we learned that the Lord uses disappointments, or should, or should I say, a, that we are appointed to be disappointed because God allowed disappointment in our lives, watch this, not to throw us, but to grow us. In other words, God allowed disappointment to, to mature us in the things of faith. So we, we, have to, we have to understand, do not allow disappointment to keep us from, uh, from obtaining, from continuing in the Lord. But as I thought it was time for me to move on from this scripture, the, the spirit of the Lord rested, arrested my attention on the 21st verse. And it reads as follows. Let me read it to you again. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them. And spoke kindly to them. My, my, my heart just got stuck on that point. Spoke kindly to them. And as, as, and as I was, was, was meditating with the Lord, spending my time with the Lord, the Lord said there's still yet one more enemy that we have to overcome. If we desire to see our dreams in the Lord to be fulfilled, if we desire to receive the blessings of the Lord, if we desire to go to the next level and experience the favor of God and, 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 and experience all that God has for us, there's another enemy that we're going to have to Overcome, amen, somebody. There's another enemy we're going to have to overcome. And for, for our sermon topic this morning, I, I believe the Spirit gave me this as our sermon topic. And our sermon topic is overcoming the enemy of, watch this, unforgiveness. Overcoming the enemy 
of unforgiveness. You see why unforgiveness is, is relevant is because all of us, if you've been in a relationship with someone other than yourself, chances are that sometime or another that you were faced with having to forgive someone or you might have offended someone and had to seek forgiveness for yourself. Minimally, all those who belong to Christ realize that before we belong to Christ, we had to ask God's forgiveness and receive his son as our Lord and Savior. And today, I just want to remind us as people of God, as children of God, in the, and, and I would say in the human race family, we all going to experience unforgiveness. After all, unforgiveness feels natural. I need you to hear that natural. When someone takes from you or someone do something to you, when somebody encroach upon your territory, when someone trespass against you, when someone do something to you that you don't particularly like, then it's easy for you to, it's easy for offense to set in. An unresolved offense, once we let it set in, it turns into the enemy that is known as unforgiveness. And let me tell you about unforgiveness. See, unforgiveness is the enemy of the cross of Jesus Christ. Because after all, it's at the cross that we, we saw the light. It's at the cross where our sins were paid for and we was able to be forgiven. Unforgiveness is a thief because unforgiveness robs us of our peace, our relationships, and leave us filled with regrets. Unforgiveness blind us to the fact of mercy. You see, we don't mind getting mercy when it benefits us. We don't mind getting living under the grace of God. But are you willing to extend mercy and grace to another that has wronged you? See, that, that kind of puts it in another level when we, you know, when we go to the Lord and we say, Lord, please be merciful. Lord, please give us grace. We kind of, we know we, we, are, we, are, we appreciate it when God give us mercy and grace. Or better yet, we, we appreciate it when people forgive us of our, our trespasses. But it's a whole different ball game when, when someone offends us, when someone trespasses against us, then we find it hard for us to forgive what God commands in his scripture for us to give. You see, unforgiveness, watch this, it halts our progression. Because when you're dealing with unforgiveness and you got unresolved offenses in your life, it's hard for you to move on. It's hard for you to move on. Because every now and then that that monster, that enemy that we call the enemy of unforgiveness will rear his ugly head. Just when you start to move on, just when you thought you was over that situation, just when you thought you was, you were making strides in the Lord, all of a sudden that ugly unforgiveness monster knocks on your door. So today we got to understand that we got to defeat this, this spirit of unforgiveness because listen it is a spirit that will cause us not to move on to get us stuck because the enemy don't want you to progress in the things of God and he throws everything he can and one of his favorite tools besides lying is offense because he know that offense can easily lead to unforgiveness and when we are or better yet it easily leads to something that we all know quite well, grudges. When we refuse to move on. When we just, see what I mean? When, you get, when you're holding a grudge, you're stuck. You can't move on. You, 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 you want to move on, but every now and then you get drawn back into that situation. And I guarantee you that uh, somewhere I can hear somebody say, well, pastor, I'm good. I'm, I, I don't have any situations. I don't have any offense in my heart towards my brothers or my sisters. Amen. But I want you to take a moment because I want you to understand that none of us are above being attacked by that spirit of unforgiveness. Because uh, listen, Luke 17 and 1, the Lord said, this right here. It is impossible that no offense should come. In other words, brother and sister, men, women, boys and girls, listen, no matter how hard you try, offense is going to occur. I need you to hear that. Offense is going to occur. Look, husband and wife, listen, 
There will be a time when wifey is going to upset you. There will be a time when hubby is going to upset you. There's going to be a time when brother and sister, best friends, you're going to offend each other. You're going to rub each other raw. Where I'm from in Georgia, we got this saying that says, even teeth and tongue fall out. Hello, somebody. If you don't know what I'm talking about, if you ever bit your tongue, you understand clearly what I'm talking about. Because the closest of the, in the, the teeth and tongue are so close, you can say they're like brothers or like sisters, wh wherever you want to characterize them. And as close as they are in relationship, every now and then, one will cross the line. I want you to understand, people of God, we all will cross the line. You Either you're going to cross the line or someone going to cross the line on you. In other words, offense is inevitable. It's inevitable. We all going to have to deal with it. So since we all going to have to deal with it, we need to know how to address offense. Because let's be real. There's some, there's, there probably been some of you out there that's hearing me today. You have been done wrong. Let's go ahead and admit that. Let's put that on the table. You have been done wrong. You didn't do nothing. You didn't, you didn't offend nobody. You tried to mind your business, and yet it seemed like offense still knocked on your door. Maybe you went to work just yesterday or, or next or, or last week, and all oh, you went and said good morning, and someone refused to speak. Look you dead in your eye. After you said hello, <clears throat> they refuse to speak. Offense come in. And you made up in your mind, I'm not going to say hello to them ever again. Maybe you ain't been like that, but listen, the pastor have been, had moments like that. And you're tempted to, to just say, you know what, I'm just going to mind my business. They're not going to speak. I'm not going to speak. But God called us to a higher standard. Listen, so let me hear, let me, let me bring this point to you right here because I am not naive to, to tell you and to stand here today to say that, you know what, forgiving folks is easy because it's not. It's not because, listen, you see, the thing is when you're offended, you're left with an emotional pain. And listen, you can have, you can have bodily harm done, done to you and your body will heal. But it's something about emotional pain when you've been injured emotionally. Like I said, unforgiveness halts your progression. Unforgiveness keeps you stuck in the moment. That person, it could be 20 years later. If that offense has not been resolved, listen, you will find yourself going, revisiting that event. It doesn't matter if it happened 30 years ago. It'll be just as fresh as it happened 20 minutes ago. Listen, we have to deal with unforgiveness. Because after all, as children of God, our whole reason, our relationship with God the Father is based upon him forgiving us through his son, Jesus Christ. That's what it's based upon. So forgiveness is a part of our trademark as children of God. And listen, we got to master it because offense is going to happen. You're going to get offended on your job. You're going to get offended. Listen, even among your brothers and sisters in Christ. Listen, you might even get offended even by something I said, regardless what you think. Listen, I have had people who believe that from this, this, this blessed, holy uh, destiny that we call pulpit, that I'm out there shooting at them. And I'm here to tell you, it's not about shooting at you. Yes, the word of God comes. Yes, the word of God, it will find you. If you're out of line with the word of God, bro, listen, expect the word of God to find you. It's going to find you. But listen, you have to remember what the scripture says, that God chastises those he loves. Listen, just like, you would, just like a good parent would chastise their son or daughter when they get out of line. Because you, want, you know that if you don't correct them when they get out of line, that something down the road is going to befall them. Listen, offense is real. Offense is real, and it can be difficult. And listen, none of us are exempt. Sometimes people offend you, and they don't even know it. That's why the Bible says if you got to ought against somebody, go to them. And then when you go to them, go to them in, in love and kindness the same way you would want somebody to address you if you, met, if you did something wrong against them. 
because I have seen that if you go to people wrong, even though they may have wronged you, and if you go to them wrong, there's a chance that even though you're trying to do what the word of God says, but if your approach is wrong, you could cause further harm. Amen, somebody. We got to make sure that we're not causing ourselves further harm. We're not exasperating the situation. But listen, that enemy of offense is tough. It's tough. And you might say, well, pastor, they done too much. I experienced too much. I extended my hand and they bit every time I extended my hand in love and fellowship. They have just closed it in the door. And you may feel that it just happened too much, but I'm here to tell you that I'm reminded of what the scripture says in Matthew 19 and 26. It says, with men, this is impossible. It may be impossible for you to forgive, but listen what the rest of that scripture says. But with God, all things are possible. In other words, you, you may need help. Sometimes when you've been cut low, and I'm like I said, I'm not naive enough to, to think that there's some people out there who's been utterly wounded, mistreated, and undervalued, and even been abused by those who supposed to love them. Listen, we have to get that unforgiveness off of us. And this is when you have to tap in the Lord's power. Don't you remember what the word says? If you will confess over in Romans chapter 10, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart and you sh and you and you and that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. Guess what? The same way. That word salvation means to be made whole. And look, when, when offense has, has grabbed us and it snared, snared us, we have to go to the Father the same way and say, Lord, I am offended. My brother said this. My brother did this. I went to them, and they still denied it. Lord, I am offended, and, and I know that you called me to forgive, but, Lord, I need your help. We have to learn to do what David did in Psalms 51. When he was, over, when he was caught in the act of adultery with Bathsheba, he went before the Lord and said, Create in me a clean heart. And renew a right spirit because we do not want that enemy of unforgiveness to take root in our lives. You see, listen, this is what I want you to understand. Whenever you let unforgiveness take a hold in your life, you are actually giving a place for the devil. Listen to me. Listen, I need you to hear that. When we hold on to grudges, when we hold on to unforgiveness and, 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 and hold on to unresolved offense in our lives, we actually give the devil a foothold. And far too long in the lives of the saints, the devil has been living rent-free in your life and in my life. And you know what? We need to evict him today in Jesus' name. Because churches have not been all that she could be because of their members are offended, because the pastors are offended, because the deacons are offended. And if we do not address that, hear me please, we cannot grow and become the, the body of Christ that the Lord intended for the church to be. The church is supposed to be progressing, not regressing. But we have to deal with that the ugly enemy of unforgiveness, somebody. We have, the only way we can deal with it is we got to allow the spirit of God to create in us a clean heart. Because you can't do it by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. Fool yourself if you want to, but you need the power of the Lord to overshadow you in order for you to forgive. Now, I know that forgiving people, it, 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 is, it can become a process. It's, I don't want to leave you in the, the, under, the misunderstanding that it, take, that it can occur overnight. Yes, it can. And sometimes it may take a while because you have to unsort and you have to deal with your, your feelings and your emotions. But I'm here to tell you that while you are being healed from unforgiveness, there's a couple of things I want to remind you this morning. I want you to remember that this right here this morning, that while you're yet in the stage of healing, remember this, don't pay it back. Don't pay it back. Listen, I, I'm from uh, middle Georgia, and I remember growing up that I was taught it was a common thing. If someone hit you, you hit them back. 
But when it comes to the things of God, you cannot use the world's, uh, the, the world's explanation of dealing with offense. We can't be hitting people back. We can't live eye for eye and a two for two. We got to learn to deal with offense the Lord's way. Let me read to you what it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 17 and through 19. It says it like this. Repay. Hear the Lord say this right here. The Lord knows you're going to be offended. The Lord knows you're going to be wrong. But hear what the Lord says. You see, we have to trust God with the outcome. Hear what God says. He says, repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it's possible, hear this, if it's possible as much as, de as depends on you, live peacefully with all men, let me stop right there. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, when someone has offended you and someone and, and say they, they refuse to address it and you've forgiven them, you may have to, watch this, I call, limit their access to you. Hello, somebody. Now, let me say it like this right here. Not everybody deserves the same amount of access to you. In other words, sometimes we got to put up healthy boundaries. There's nothing wrong with boundaries. I remember I was speaking with a young lady one time, and she was, she was telling me that she had a, a loved one that every time that loved one would take too much of, of I'd say, the joy juice, that loved one will call her and, 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 and start to blast her and stuff. I told her, listen, listen, what you have to do? do you, I said, do you got caller ID? They say, yes. Do you got voicemail? I said, they say, yes. I said, sometimes, listen here, you got to learn to let some calls go to voicemail. Hello, somebody. You got to learn to swipe, was it swipe to the left? Amen, somebody? You got to make sure that sometime for your own sanity and to prevent you from allowing the devil to get a foothold through the, through the, through the enemy of unforgiveness, sometimes you got to limit your access. Limit, let, sometimes you got to limit your access to people. It's not that you're acting funny. You're just saying, I just want to love you. And sometimes you, listen, you got to love some people from afar. Hello, somebody. You got to love some people from afar. Verse 19 says it like this. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written. Watch this. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. In other words, it, God sees what people do to you. Hello, somebody. And let me say it like this. And God sees what you do to people. God sees. And God will deal with it in his time. Hello, somebody. We got to leave vengeance to God. Because here's the thing. I know people who took vengeance, and they took vengeance on defending themselves, and it turns out they went too far. And now they're serving prison sinners because they went too far. We have to allow God to handle that because, listen, we can get in anger and we can start moving in anger and everything, and that will cause us to move and go too far. But getting back to what I was, I was what, what arrested my attention from Genesis chapter 50, verse, verse 21, is that at all that Joseph went through, and Joseph went through some ugly things, because sometimes when you're going through, you have a sense to say, well, pastor, you don't understand how they did me. You don't understand how I felt. Listen, look what Joseph went through. Joseph brothers initially plotted to kill him. And then they said, you know what? We're going to profit from him. We're going to just sell him as a slave. Imagine that your big brothers, your, your 10 other big brothers, they plotted instead of taking care of you, they plotted to sell you into slavery and to concoct a lie to cover up their tracks. And then when he was here, this it's bad enough that he was been taken by force away from his family, away from his father. D uh, Joseph was then sold as a slave. And, and, and here it is, when it seemed like even though he was a slave and his life started to even out a little bit, he was lied on for, watch this, for having integrity. Listen, that's a lesson for us today that even you don't have to do anything wrong and still face opposition, still face persecution. In fact, you can do right and still be persecuted. 
Don't you remember what the scripture said? Those who shall live godly shall suffer persecution. Listen, my brother, my sister, stop thinking. Get out of that habit of thinking, well, I ain't hurt nobody. Why are people messing with me? Listen, it has nothing to do. Persecution come from the word's sake. But you see, remember, God allowed you to go through that so you can grow through it. God got something for you. Don't worry about it. You just keep on moving on in Jesus' name. Don't you think that God didn't see it? God saw it. But God is building you up. He's building you up because he's going to do something great for you. But you got to go through. Listen, I told you before, God may show you your, your blessings. He may show you the mountaintop that you're going to have in the future. But what he does not show you is that between where you are and to your mountaintop experience, there's something called a valley. And in the valley, it get dark. In the valley, it get lonely. In, va in the valley, it gets to the point where you feel like giving up. Disappointment comes. But listen, we got to keep on keeping on in Jesus' name. And, and Joseph went through all of these things, helped someone in prison, and they forgot about him. And for, seemingly for two long years, Joseph would, probably was thinking, Is, am I ever going to see my dreams and God be fulfilled? And it took a problem. And you see, I need you to hear this because God will use you to solve a problem that will propel you into greatness. Hello, somebody. I'm speaking to somebody right now. God wants to use you to solve a problem, and from you solving that problem, it's going to propel you to new heights in the Lord. Hello, somebody. And he saw Pharaoh's problem, and it was well said, and he was promoted. And them same people that lied on him, them same people that mistreated him. Them same people that, that concocted a lie and sold him into slavery had to come to him for help. Amen, somebody. Listen, God knows. Listen, you don't have to worry about it. You will not always be down. But, it, but, but, but something he had to deal with, he had to forgive his brothers. And what I love about Joseph, it's what he said in, in verse 21. He said, it was, he knew that God meant it for the good. What you're going through, the pain you're suffering, the mistreatment, the offense, listen, God's going to use it for your good. God has a greater plan. Sometimes the Lord allow us to go through certain things so we'll have a heart for those who will come after us that will go through the same thing. Listen, it's, 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 it's easy to tell somebody to get over it when you never went through it. See, God wants us to, see, listen, I want y'all to understand that God expects us to minister. See, we think, see, we got to get out of this habit and think that only a pastor can minister the word of God. Listen, a pastor's job is to equip and to train you so God can send you forth to minister the word of God to other people. Because there's places that the pastor cannot go. But listen, you can go. You can go. God called you to go. You equip. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, you are equipped. Yes, sir, you are are equipped and God will use your experiences to bless and to strengthen somebody else along the way. That's why we don't have time to allow the enemy of unforgiveness to have a free ride in our life. I don't know about you, but everything in my house has to have a purpose or it has to go. Don't allow unforgiveness not to just have free rent. Somebody right now need to get that unforgiveness and serve eviction papers on unforgiveness. Amen, somebody. And like I said, let me tell you, we, I, I told you just a moment ago why, that, you know, what to do while you're being healed, healed and, 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 and being delivered from that spirit of offense, that spirit of, of unforgiveness. But I'm going to tell you the, uh, the real reason why we got to allow that, we got to evict that spirit of offense. We got to evict it. We can't let it rest. We can't let it stay. Because listen, when we hold unforgiveness, watch this. Unforgiveness hinders prayers. I need you to hear that. Here it is. You praying and you believe in God to move in a situation. 
And, and you probably say, well, Lord, I've been praying for this a long time. I believe you. But you got to check yourself. Just You got to check yourself. Is there sin in the camp? Is there, is there something in my heart that every time I pray and my prayer goes up into the, the, the throne room of God, it can't make it through the double doors of the Holy Ghost. And you're wondering why, Holy Ghost, why you're not bringing my prayers before the Lord? It's because there's something in that prayer that's, that's causing God not to see you, not to hear you. Listen what Isaiah 59 verses 1 through 2 says. I'm speaking to someone this morning. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened. In other words, God is not weak. God, I need you to understand that because some people will think that I'm praying and maybe God is not powerful enough to deliver or to answer my prayer. But I want you to understand God's hand is not short. Nowhere, God's hand is not weak. God is all powerful, y'all. Listen, I need you to hear that. No, that it cannot save. My, God's mighty hand is awesome nor his ear heavy. In other words, it's not that God can't hear you. He has the ability to hear your prayer, my prayer, that person prayer over there, that person prayer over here, and still be just as in tune. You see, God is not like us that, you know, we can only can really listen to one thing effectively. God can listen to the prayers of the whole world and address everybody's prayer without one detail going short. So we know that it's not because he's, his hand is weak. We know that it's not because he's dull of hearing or his ear heavy that he can't hear. But I like what verse 2 says, and that's what I'm trying to drive home to us today. But your iniquities. In other words, iniquities is more than just sin. Iniquity means a crooked or perverse heart. And when we allow un un unforgiveness, out. And when we allow those grudges to fall, to, to stay in our heart and don't get them and don't evict them out, it causes our heart to be crooked, to not be upright within us. It says, but your iniquities have separated. Listen, that's another thing. It separates us. It separates us from your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he cannot hear. Listen. Unforgiveness hinder our prayers. Let me give you another point why we got to address and defeat this enemy of unforgiveness. Unforgiveness, watch this, disqualify you for forgiveness. It disqualify you for forgiveness. In Matthew, if you would turn to Matthew chapter 6, verses 8 through 15, you will find that Jesus is in a discourse with his disciples. The disciples said, will you teach us how to pray? And the Lord goes in great details and tell them about the prayer. And if, if, if you're not, I believe that if you've been walking with the Lord, you have heard what is commonly referred to as the Lord prayer. It start off with our Father who, who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. But that's a part in here after we get through glorifying God. Round verse 12, it says, and forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors, Jesus is saying that when you pray, that you are asking God for, when you are asking God for forgiveness, you need to understand that, the, that, your forgive, that God's forgiving you is predicated on whether you forgive others. That's the debt we're talking about. That's the debt we're talking about. We have to forgive because, listen, we want the Lord to forgive us. I don't know about you, but I do so much stuff just this morning that I need the Lord to forgive me for. And I have to remember, see, that's another thing why you forgive. Think about this. What if God didn't forgive you for what you do? What if God didn't give you the grace that you need? And listen, I believe the Lord tell us that not because he's naive that, that offense is not going to come, but when we, when, from God's point of view, all of us, all of us, I don't care if you, 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 you pastor so-and-so. I don't care if you first lady so-and-so. I don't care if you deacon so-and-so. All of us. I don't care if you mother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so. I don't care if you mama or daddy. I don't care if, listen, 
all of us have sinned. All of us offend. Listen, mama, I know your mama, but that don't exempt you for going back and telling your child, I'm sorry, I, I, need, to, I need to apologize because I, I offended you. Daddy, I know you work hard and you prepare, but listen, that doesn't mean that you, do, you, you don't have to apologize if you do something wrong towards your kid. Listen, none of us. Uh, but when you get to the point where you think you can't apologize, you got a problem. In fact, apologizing and getting that thing right is, is reconciling. We're supposed to be reconciled one another. And when we do that, we show great strength of character. See, people think, you know, apology is a sign of weakness. No, it's not. It's weaker. It's the weak man that won't acknowledge his faults. Hello, somebody. It's the weak woman that won't acknowledge her faults. Hello, somebody. All of us. Listen, offense going to come. And we have to deal with it. We're going to have to deal with it. And we got to learn to evict it from our lives. Yeah. That we may go on in Jesus' name. With that being said, as I come to my close, I want to speak to someone today. You heard the word of God. You heard as you reflected in your own life, you thought about that there's somebody that has wronged you. Sometimes, as Matthew chapter 18 says, it would be nice as people will come to you once they offend you, but sometimes you have to go to them. That's what Matthew 18 says when, you know, if, you, if, if, if your brother, has, brother or sister have offended you, have, 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 there's a fault between them, go to you and that brother alone. Sometimes to, to begin the healing process, we got to go to that person who offended us. And I know you probably said, well, I shouldn't have to do that, Pastor. But listen, it's possible that that person did not know that they offended you. Hello, somebody. And maybe they do know that they offended you. But it's, it's you. You're just trying to get, get that off of you. You see, when you forgive folks... You're really getting it off of yourself. You're taking yourself off the hook. See, some people think that they forgive somebody that they got away. Listen, no, no, no. Remember, I just read, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I shall repay. Let God do the paying back. Because God knows the whole situation. Because maybe that person did offend you, but there could be some second and third order effects that led them up there. And what you thought wasn't what you, th what, what, what you thought was not really what occurred hello somebody listen we can't be we can't call ourselves children of God walking around laying down with offense laying down with unforgiveness today is time to get free some of us need to get free we've been we've been we we haven't been freed in a long time you can't even worship God in free in spirit and listen and in truth we need truth in our inward parts in our heart, in our mind. So that when we give God our very best praise, when we offer a prayer, a sacrifice, when we offer a, pray, a prayer, a sacrifice, when we need the Lord to move, he can say, yes, my child, get it. Let's remember what Psalms 24 says, who shall ascend unto the Lord? He who has what? Clean hands and a pure heart. Let's go before the Lord today and ask God to purify our hearts. Amen. Will you join me? Dear Father God, in the name of Jesus, we heard your word. We, we know, Father God, that, that you expect us and you, you mandate in your word that we forgive others. Forgive others. In order for us to get forgiveness of our trespasses, we have to forgive others their trespasses. And Lord, we admit that there have been some trespasses Lord that we have yet to give up and we pray Lord that you will give us strength Father God to go to the person we need to go to if we have to to forgive others Father God not because it's letting them off the hook but Lord because it's letting us off the hook
So, Lord, I pray that you would touch my brothers, touch my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Touch them, Father God. Touch that young man, that older man, that young woman, that older woman, that boy or girl, Father God, that is wrestling with the enemy of unforgiveness, that's wrestling with grudges, with wrestling with anger, Father God. I pray that you set them free. Set them free in the name of Jesus. Create in them a clean heart and renew a right spirit. Father God, I pray, Lord, that brothers and sisters can reconcile. I pray that, that parents and children can reconcile, that husband and wife can rep reconcile. I pray, Father God, that, 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 that people of God can reconcile in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And if you're here, I want you to know, if you're here and you don't know just Jesus that we talk about, and you would like to get to know him, listen, he knows that you're not perfect. In fact, none of us are perfect. Even those who proclaim to be brothers and sisters, they claim to be Christians, Father, Christians in the name of Jesus. We're not perfect. We make mistakes. But what I love about the Lord is that he will work through us as we mature in him. God knows we're going to make mistakes in the future. And today is a good day that if you don't know him in the pardon of your sins, that he will move on your life. So I pray in the name of Jesus that if you feel in the tug of the spirit knocking on the door of your heart that you would let him in. Let the Lord in. Let the Lord in. And this is how you let him in. By simply repeating after me this right here. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I have messed up. I pray that you will forgive me. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. And with that, I believe what your words say that I'm saved. I belong to you and you belong to me. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you prayed that prayer, I'm going to ask that you would just follow the details on the screen. Reach out to me. Reach out to me so I can get some information in your hand and, and we can set up a time that we can talk, that we can guide and grow in this journey that we call the, our walk with the Lord. And also, I just want to remind us that we have what we call the hour of power. That's our midweek Bible study. I went mid, you can say midweek worship time. And what we do is we have it in a format that we can join in by conference call. You know, just follow the details on the screen. And we can do, we can meet, we can pray, we can, we can, we can, we can study the word of God, we can, we can um, speak our prayer requests and pray together. I look forward to that time. So will you join me? Just, just, take, just take a little time out of your busy schedule and join us on Wednesday at 6.30. It will be a blessing to you. It will be a blessing to you. And also just want to take this moment to, to just tell the people of God, to let the people of God know in the Evergreen Missionary Baptist Church here in Williams that, that the pastor love you, first lady love you, there's nothing you can do about it. I'm praying for you. I'm believing God for you. I'm praying that God's blessing to rest upon you. And to those who have joined us uh, through social media, those who have joined, joined us, I just want to let you know that, that, that I will call you my Evergreen Missionary Baptist Church Global Church Ministry. I love you. First Lady, love you. We're praying for you. We believe in God's blessings for you as well. And also, on our way, I thought about doing this a little different today. As we 
conclude this service, I'm going to ask that you'll stick around. First Lady is going to bless us with a song. Amen. She's going to bless us with a song. And, and I believe that it's going to minister to you and it's going to lift your spirit. So I'm going to ask that you continue to maintain and, and, and just join us as we, as we conclude these services with a, with, a, with a song that the Lord has given the First Lady to minister to us. And, and and also just want to thank those who have been faithful and given to the work of the ministry here at the Evergreen Missionary Baptist Church. I pray God blessings upon you. I'm praying that God will deliver you, heal you, whatever you stand in need of, that God will bless you. Amen. And if this ministry has been a blessing to you, I'm just asking you to, to allow the Spirit of God to tell you what to give. And I'm going to ask that you will sow into this ministry. Amen. As God has purpose in your heart. Amen. With, with all my hearts and minds clear, this is Pastor Joyner, First Lady Joyner, reminding you to love God, love people, and that we love you. Yeah.